Have you thought about how you'll knot your threads when machine quilting? There are many different methods to choose from, some utilitarian and others more professional. Find out about all of these techniques and then decide which works best for your quilt. We're using this quilt to demonstrate these knots along with this small quilt sandwich so you can get a more close-up view. Also, at the end of the video, you'll find out about some of the pros and cons for each of these knots. Below you'll find the times each of these topics appear in the video so you can jump ahead if need be. One of the most popular machine knotting methods is to lock your stitches by going back and forth. I want to start here, so I'll place my needle about an eighth to a quarter of an inch away from the starting point. Then I'll pull up my bobbin threads. Hold on to your thread so they don't make a mess on the back. Lower your pressure foot and stitch in reverse. Stop and go forward. Go back in and clip those threads to get them out of the way. When you get to the end, slow down. Stop. Do a few stitches in reverse can end here or I usually go forward a little and stop. Clip your threads. If you have a knot feature on your machine, use it. First, pull up those bobbin threads. When I engage this feature, my needle will stick in place a few times and then moves forward. If you don't have a knot feature on your machine, you can make one using your zigzag. Here's a sample of my zigzag stitching. If I lower the stitch length, I get something that looks like this. If I lower the stitch width, I get something that looks like this. If I lower both the length and the width, I can get a little knot. Set your machine to a narrow zigzag. On this machine, it's between a zero and a one, and then set your stitch length between a zero and a one. Make sure you've pulled up your bobbin threads and so Let the needle go back and forth in place a few times. Turn off the zigzag function and then go back to your straight stitch. When you want to place a knot at the end, slow down, reset your machine to the zigzag and stitch a few times in place. Sometimes you won't need a knot because you can rely on later stitching to complete the job. In this example, I'll be quilting down this line. I'll start my stitching here outside of the actual quilt top. To get started, hold on to your threads and move a few stitches forward. Clip those threads to get them out of the way and continue stitching. When you get to the end, go past the edge of your quilt into the batting and stop. I don't need a knot here because when I add this binding and stitch here, that stitching line will lock these stitches in place. Another time where you won't need a knot is when you start in an area like this where there's continuous line quilting. So I'll be quilting down this inner border all the way around, and then I'll come back to here. So when I start, I don't have to put a knot here. It's when I come back around that I'll go over these stitches with a knot. So to get started, I pulled up my bobbin thread and I'll start stitching. And clip those threads. So I've gone all the way around the quilt and now I'm coming into where I started. I'll wanna go one or two stitches past where I started to lock those stitches and then I'll put my preferred knot there. So one, two stitches past and I'm just going to use my sewing machine built-in knot. I'll press that button and now both the beginning and the ending are secure. For this knot you want to pull up your bobbin thread and then pull both top and bobbin threads about 12 inches away from your stitching. 
Later, you'll be using these to make your knot. Pull them to the side and hold them tight in your hand or under your hand. Lower your pressure foot and sew. Make sure the threads are away from your stitching. When you come to the end, slow down, pull up your needle, and pull out your threads at least 12 inches, and then cut. Now I'm ready to come back in and hand knot these threads. Sometimes to prevent them from raveling while I'm working, I'll tie a single knot there. Then thread your needle with both threads. I'm going to take my needle and wrap one, two, three, uh, I can do it a fourth time around that needle. And then I'll take and place that needle down in the fabric. I'll pull on my thread to get that knot right next to that fabric. I'll take my needle and I'll, it's in between the layers and I'll scoot over about an inch or so and come up. So here's the knot right here. I can see it, but I don't want to see it. I want it to go inside here. So I'll hold on to these threads and pull it and it's popped inside the middle. I'll cut this thread right there. My knot's been hidden and there's no little thread ends showing. Before we go on, I want to show you the difference here. Here's where I started and there's two threads because I pulled up the bobbin thread. Here's where I ended. There's only one thread. So where you, when you end, what you need to do is take that thread to the back. You can purchase these easy threading needles to make the process go quicker. Just place the thread and the V at the top and pull. It's like magic there. It's been threaded. And then stitch down. Take your thread to the back. On the back, take both threads, place them in your needle, wrap the thread one, two, three times around, and then go into the back. Hold on to your threads and then pull, pull that knot inside. Clip your threads. If you're not sure which knot to use, Try each one of them beforehand. Use scraps to make a little quilt sandwich. Here's the first example where you go forward and then reverse. This is easy to implement, but often you'll end up with a little tail like this. If I clip this closer, it will continue to unravel. You'll have a double line of threads where you start and where you end. It might not be pretty, but it gets the job done. This is a knot that was made on my sewing machine. It's easy to make, but it's not invisible. Here's my zigzag knot. This is a zigzag where the stitch length and the width are almost at zero. Down here, it's closer to one. So you can see the closer you stitch it, the better. The reason why I don't always stitch at zero is sometimes certain threads will get clogged up in your machine. And so you need to, you need to keep the width a little bit wider. For this sample, I've added some binding here to show you what happens. So here's my stitching and I go all the way down. And when I add this binding, these stitches come across to lock these stitches in place. And so you won't see any knot here. This is great if you can do straight line stitching all the way across your quilt. This is an example where it's been knotted by hand. You get a much more finished look when using this knot, but it does take extra time. I've pulled both threads to the back to give you another look at this knot. I've threaded my needle and I'll take and wrap the thread one, two, about three times around. And then let me pull this up close. I want that knot to be right next to my fabric and I'm going to go in and it, I'm not going to go all the way through. I'm going to, to see where my needle is. I'm in the middle of that quilt sandwich. I'll come over. Uh, let's say I come over about an inch and pull this through. There's that knot. 
Let me get this needle off of here. And now I'm going to pull. You can see that knot in here, and I'll pull this up a little. And there's no little threads showing. I hope this video gave you some ideas on how to secure those stitches when quilting. For more free beginner quilting tutorials, please visit LearnHowToQuilt.com. Thanks.